Hello and welcome to a new video about measurements. This time we are going to talk about how to transfer information from one point to the other. Let's have a, a re-look, let's call it, a second look at our measurement chain. Okay, so we have somewhere, we have the sensor. All right. It's here. Typical symbol for the sensor is this. Bridge, Wheatstone Bridge, uh, sensor. Then we have somewhere, we have the amplifier. So we need an amplifier to gain this, the, the signal from the sensor, right? And somewhere we have some devices which do process, okay? Processing. I'll make simply some Digits display, for instance. Yeah? So, where do we transfer our data? Right? I said, okay, here, here is the physical entity which is influencing the sensor somehow. Yeah? And, well, data is everywhere. Yeah? Because we all need, we all need to transfer the whole information from here. Uh, to here, to here, yeah. maybe from we need to give some information to the amplifier, then we get from the processing some information. So all those things, yeah. here we have information transfer, okay? So, even if we are local and only measure local, do um, local measurements, we have to transfer information from one point to the other. Yeah? So, this means we have to think about how to code information in our measurement signals. Yeah? There is no, no way around this. Yeah? And, well, there are several names now which apply, okay? And I will try to, to explain what's, what's behind them. So, one, one thing which is already pretty hard to explain is the difference between deterministic and stochastic. A deterministic signal. Uh, deterministic signal is, you know, it it follows some rules. Okay, there are rules. There's an e missing. Deterministic. Uh, there, there there are rules which apply to the signal. Uh, and if I if I watch the signal long enough, I can think about what the signal is like next. Yeah? So there is some logic behind the signal. Yeah? There are rules. Some logic. Yeah? This means, if the signal is predictable, yeah, I can guess the future a little bit, yeah, or I can guess the history of the signal and so on, yeah, deterministic method. Yeah. A stochastic signal has no rules, follows no rules, yeah, no logic, no rules. It can be different. 
any time. The, the, the next value is completely, completely, it has no connect to the first one. Yeah? So this is, for instance, uh, a signal which is very noisy. We are noise, stochastic signal, we cannot tell. Yeah? However, maybe we can tell something from statistic methods. Yeah? So here we can apply statistic methods. If we have a noisy signal, maybe the mean value is some contains a little bit more information. So filtering and so on, stochastic signal, try to get a deterministic signal out of, of a stochastic signal, all right? Deterministic and stochastic. Usually we want to have deterministic signals, yeah? Right, yeah? Okay. And then, there are two types of signals. I think it will be clearer afterwards. Uh, well, there is a time continuous. Yeah. And time discrete. What does this mean? Yeah. Well, time continuous signals are always there, are always holding the information. At any time, any time I look at the signal, I know the information. Okay? So the information is available. any time yeah. at any it doesn't really matter which point in time i have a short look at the signal yeah short look at signal is already okay a short look at signal park no information right time continues yeah. time continuous signal and then there are time discrete signals. Time discrete signals, you know, they need some time. Yeah? And only after this time, at a certain point in time, the information is correct. Yeah? Then it again needs some time. And then again, at a certain point in time, the information is again there. In between, I have no information. Yeah? So I cannot look any time. I have to wait until this this information of the signal arrives, uh, and then I know. Uh, so, only at discrete point in time, the signal information can be decoded, let's call it, yeah? Only at discrete point in time, the signal information is available our right. Okay? So we do not have we need a longer look yeah? and wait until this point in time to decode the message. Yeah. And then of course of course we have uh, analog and digital uh, analog digital signals. Yeah. Analog signal means uh, one parameter of the signal is analog to the information. Yeah. We will hear about this in the next video. Yeah. One parameter of signal is reflecting is reflecting the information 
All right, this is analog signal. Yeah? One parameter, maybe the amplitude or the current value, or the voltage level or something like this, is holding the information of the of the is holding the information. Period. <laughs> and digital, uh, you know, there's a sequence. A sequence is coding the information. Okay, I do not have. Uh, you know, one parameter which I have to look at, I have uh, signs, yeah? and this, the sequence of the signs are holding the information. Okay, so here the sequence of signs are coding the information. This would be something like an alphabet, for instance, uh, even if it's not digital. Yeah? Uh, however, uh, here I've coded information and only the information can only be decoded with the sequence of, of, of signs. Okay? This would also be digital. So it's not just one parameter, yeah? maybe how thick the line is or something like this. Yeah? Uh, it's, it's a sequence. Yeah? That's digital. Usually this signals, this is a number, right? Then digit makes more sense. Okay, so these are the names yeah, of, of the parameters, yeah, so deterministic signals, so stochastic signal and so on. Uh, next time we're going to talk about analog signals. Okay, what possibilities we have on analog data transfer? You see, there will be several, and we will try to find out if they are time continuous, time discrete, and we will discuss how to digitize time, digitize them. Okay? Signal and their transfer. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>